Segment 19, Atomic Spectra. We spoke in the last segment about the relationship between photons and the atoms. The, the, the energy level differences between the atoms have to correspond to the energy of photons that are interacting with the atoms. So for example, in this illustration, if a photon comes along that doesn't correspond to an energy difference between two states of an atom, it just passes right by. But if a photon comes along that matches that energy difference, it can be absorbed by the atom and the atom will make a transition from a lower state to a higher state, to a more excited state. Sometimes, after a period of time, this atom will spontaneously re-emit a photon in some direction, again corresponding to that energy difference. So here we see again this illustration of the energy differences in the photons and the longer wavelength photon is matched by the, the smaller energy difference and the shorter wavelength photon is matched by the larger energy difference. Now if you take a spectrum of an object you will see a lot of very fine absorption lines that correspond to transitions between two states in different atoms. So take for example the Sun. In the top spectrum you see the rainbow that you get by by shining sunlight through a prism. But if you have a higher dispersion instrument, so shown in the in the bottom of the illustration as a blow up of the yellow part of the spectrum, you'll see that this yellow continuous region is punctuated by a series of dark lines and these dark lines are absorption lines which match the energy difference between two states of various atoms. Before we go on to talk about this, let me just make an important point, which is th this way of displaying it doesn't really show you very much information. So what we like to do instead is display the spectra rather than as colors versus wavelength with dark and light to show a spectrum like on the lower right where you see the relative flux on the left and wavelength uh, on along the x-axis and you're seeing the con the right continuum of the spectrum as, the, as the, the flat top of the lines and then the dips are where these dark lines are appearing and this kind of display gives you much much more information. The discovery of these lines in the spectra dates back to the early 19th century where a Bavarian optician, Josef Fraunhofer, used a diffraction grating to discover and catalog lines in the solar spectrum. Uh, you see a picture of Fraunhofer on the upper left and a commemorative stamp showing the uh, spectrum that he observed. The continuous spectrum is shown graphically on the top and then this solar spectrum with the lines in it and these labels that you see for different lines, the D line, the E line, and so forth, were there because he didn't know what the elements were that caused these lines at this point. So he just labeled them in, in alphabetical order. And it was only later, with further experimentation, that we actually understood what was what in these, in these uh, original spectra that were taken uh, by Fraunhofer at that time. So here, for example, is the again the energy states for the for hydrogen for the Bohr atom showing the different transitions of hydrogen which come out then at different at different wavelengths and would be recognizable in the spectrum by their characteristic wavelength. Each atomic species whether it's an atom or an ion and each molecule has its own set of energy levels and therefore it's un unique set of allowable transitions as a result, the spectrum of an atom of a, or a molecule is unique like a fingerprint. One line is not enough to be sure whether you have a particular atom because in some cases there are lines of different atoms that lie almost on top of each other. But the pattern doesn't lie. It, so you look here in this illustration and you look at the pattern of hydrogen lines in visible wavelengths and the pattern of sodium or helium, they're very, very different and they're easily distinguishable one from the next. Quasars, which were discovered in the 1960s, uh, are objects that are, are extremely far away from us and appear to be moving away from us very rapidly. And this rapid motion was recognized because the pattern of hydrogen lines was very clear 
in the spectra. They were just at very much longer wavelengths than, than they would be in objects that were at rest. 